Welcome everybody. My name is Mr. Scary Melvin. I'm joined once again by Max Douglas, aka Star Metroid. What's up, bud? Not much. We are we have the final battle here. Oh, excitement at this point. I think it's late in the day. A lot of people are tired, but there was still a good crowd in front of the uh, streaming booth watching this game. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I had to leave at this point to make it back to Vancouver. Oh, so you actually didn't know what happened. No, I didn't actually get to see this battle. Oh, okay, so this is going to be exciting stuff for all of us. Um, we've, bo we've seen both these players' teams already uh, previously. It is going to be between Randy, a.k.a. R. Inanimate, and Tony, a.k.a. Chinese Dude. Uh, we see Randy's team on the field right now. It is the one with the smear goal, the very controversial uh, the villain, as Randy likes to call it sometimes. Mm -hmm. However, as we saw in the last Best of 3, Smeargle never actually used Dark Void. Do you think he's playing uh, Smeargle without Dark Void, period? Oh, no. I talked to him earlier in the day, and he mentioned that he had Dark Void. Oh, okay. But he assured me that Dark Void was not his go-to strategy. Okay. All right. Well, let's start the video right now. You ready? Yep. All right. Three, two, one, play. All right. So they're picking their teams here, and I'm going to guess uh, Randy is going to go with his go-to combo of Blastoise and Smeargle. Um, Chad... Tony's got the really interesting team with the uh, the Raichu right, Lightning Rod and the Rotom Heat with the Substitute Discharge set. Uh, he's also got the Parish Song Mega Gengar uh, and also the final Gambit Star Raptor, which you've seen. We actually haven't seen his last two Pokemon, which was the Gyarados and uh, what was the other Scissor. one? Scissor. We haven't seen either of those ones really come into play yet. Well, I mean, I, I saw the Gyarados come into play. Oh, okay. Well then. Uh, anything yeah, I, I special to note about, about those Pokemon? Um, I never saw the scissor from him during our games because my team just had a strong fire presence. Okay, but well what about the Gyarados? The Gyarados was a bulky set using Citrus Berry and Dragon Dance. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Although, if I were Tony right now, I'd be a little hesitant to bring it in. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to see the leads come out here for uh, both Randy and Tony. And uh, Randy, very snazzy schoolgirl outfit here. He's going to lead the, the go-to combo for himself, the non-Dark Void combo. <laughs> and uh, Tony leading with the Rotom and the Raichu right off the bat here, threatening and the Blastoise heavily. Yeah, this is a combo I actually wanted to see from Tony, because he can discharge and fake out on the first turn, and then he'll have the boosted Volt Switch and another Discharge to threaten Blastoise. Right, and since Discharge is a spread move, it will ignore the Follow Me, and it'll just still hit both Pokemon. Indeed, and it'll also get around the redirect from Lightning Rod, because it hits all three Pokemon. It'll trigger Lightning Rod, but it'll still deal damage to the opponents. Mm -hmm. But triggering Lightning Rod is not going to help the Fake Out, since the Fake Out goes first, and it also is a physical attack. Indeed. But uh, the nice thing is is that uh, at least Tony's not afraid of hitting into King Shield because he's not attack-oriented. He's special attack. Mm -hmm. In addition, if the Smeargle was for an, a King Shield, the Raichu's just going to be able to Encore it in the next turn, as we've seen before. That's true. So instead, he's just going to fake out, and Smeargle's going to flinch, not revealing what he was planning to do. Um, and here comes the Discharge. Yeah, and hopefully this can lower Blastoise's HP enough that the, the Water Spout won't Oh, get the Paralysis! Damage. Ooh, that could be big. And the Blastoise is paralyzed, so we'll never know what he was going to do. Wow. Uh, but Smeargle's going to get Evasive going up here, which might help it out a little bit. Uh, what is the accuracy on Discharge? Discharge has perfect accuracy. Perfect accuracy. So it will reduce that a little bit then. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Tony has a spread move here is huge, because the Smeargle, now that it has the Evasion Boost, if it uses Follow Me, not only does... Not only would Tony be forced to attack it, but he would also have the potential to miss it. So with Discharge, he'll be able to hit both Pokemon, and the right. Blastoise won't be able to avoid damage. Yeah, and the Blastoise now is a very risky play, and I don't think the Water Spout's going to do that much damage. Yeah, in fact, Randy is going to pull that out right now, and uh, throw in the Guard Charm, which will absorb the Discharge without f any worry. Smeargle avoiding the Volt Switch here. Going to throw out the Dark Void does still outspeed the, uh, the Rotom Heat and does get one Pokemon to sleep oh, no, and two Pokemon to sleep. So now, uh, and Rotom of course now is asleep, unable to do anything. 
Oh, Smeargle getting an accuracy boost, so now the Dark Forces are going to be guaranteed. Although it lost some of its evasion. Uh-huh. So we've seen Randy's been able to come back from that pretty harsh turn one. Right. With the discharge and the paralysis on the Blastoise. Now with Moody, for those of you guys who don't know, one stat will go up by two steps, and then another stat will go down by one. So the fact that he got evasion up the previous turn and evasion down the next turn means that his evasion is still up one step because it went up twice and down once. Uh, but he's going to retreat that and reset all those stat boosts anyways. I think he just wants to do some damage now that he has these Pokemon asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from what I've learned from watching Tony's battles is that you want to knock out the Raichu as soon as you can. Right, but he's going to throw out the uh, Rock Slide here, doing more damage to the Rotom. I think he's he wants to keep his Scissor around, so the Rotom Heat is probably a big threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the main reason Scissor hasn't seen a lot of play this season is that Fire Attacks are very popular. Yes, especially as uh, with the aforementioned uh, popularity of Charizard, Mega Charizard. In both forms, actually. Mm -hmm. you can't yeah, fool Mega me, you're a Charizard X! <laughs> yeah, Mega Charizard. Mega Charizard Y has been the popular form for the entire season. But at this Washington Regionals, I actually saw three Mega Charizard X being used against mm -hmm. me. And I think it's a, a lot to do with assumptions and trying to make people assume certain things and then pull a fast one on them, and giving you, especially in uh, Swiss rounds, which are best of one. Uh, Getting them, getting people to bring the wrong four Pokemon into a battle is very huge. Mm -hmm. Because Mega Charizard Y has is easily countered by Rotom Heat. However, Mega Charizard X is able to withstand all of Rotom Heat's attacks with ease. All right, so uh, the Pikachu has gone down. Sorry, the Raichu has gone down, and the Garchomp does indeed reveal the Lumberry here as Rotom wakes up and uh, attacks it. I'm hearing a lot of background noise from you. What's going on there? I'm not sure what that's being caused by. Hmm. It's probably it. The only real source of noise is the fan from my computer. Yeah. Oh, actually, I have Facebook open. I'm getting some notifications from that. No, it is definitely kind of a fan-like noise, but uh, it's, a little, it's died down a bit now. Oh yeah, All that's right. my computer. <laughs> Tony now bringing the Gyarados. So uh, I don't know how Gyarados is going to help out here. It will take some extra damage from the Rock Slide, so it is baiting out a big Rock Slide from the Garchomp here. At the same time, with the Intimidate on Garchomp, the Rock Slide isn't going to be able to do as much damage mm -hmm. as Randy would normally want. And also, the uh, Scissor probably doesn't want to stick around too long in this field where the Rotom is no longer asleep and is a big threat. Mm -hmm. It might throw the U-turn, I think. Uh, Garchomp is actually going to go away first. Yeah, Garchomp probably anticipating an Ice Fang from the Gyarados. Mm. And also going to manually uh, remove the scissor from the field and bring back Blastoise. He's going to bring back his leads here. Mm -hmm. Blastoise is probably just trying to tank an overheat to lower Rotom's damage. Second burn uh, coming out does hit into Smeargle, and Tony is uh, still continuing his perfect accuracy streak with the uh, Will O' Wisp. The Gyarados does get that Dragon Dance off for free, basically. No damage being thrown his way, so uh, speed boost and attack boost for itself, which will definitely help it uh, potentially get rid of the Smeargle, but Smeargle or Blastoise might be running the fake out here. We've seen Blastoise have Protect, Water Spout, and Aura Sphere, and also Ice Beam, actually, so it doesn't have fake out. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah. The Smeargle here gets the speed boost off Moody, mm, so that's gonna it'll be, be interesting to see if they can actually have speed the Gyarados that has a plus one speed boost. Gyarados is going to protect, not even going to uh, gambit gamble against that. Uh, Smeargle does indeed go for the Dark Void. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to wonder if not if protecting was a mistake, because with Dark Void's lower accuracy, you might just want to have two chances to miss for them to miss and then just try to attack. Yeah, but the Blastoise is swinging into the Gyarados here. I think at this point, Randy also uh, might know... Sorry, Tony might actually know the full set from Randy, and without a strong hitting uh, water attack anymore, the Rotom Heat is actually not being threatened that much. Water Spout not doing that much damage to it. Mm -hmm. And Tony might also just want to be waiting for the Smeargle to be knocked out by Burn. That's true. Uh, and we know that Tony, of course, doesn't have 
uh, protect on his Rotom, which is why he couldn't uh, avoid that Dark Void. Mm -hmm. He couldn't Dark Avoid it. <laughs> hey, you like that one. <laughs> Uh, second Dark Void coming out here, so uh, Smeargle is indeed faster than Gar Gyarados even with the Dragon Dance. Uh, and that's some information that Tony needs to take to the bank for the next round indeed. Uh, Rotom wakes up another one turn sleep, it's going to use the Substitute now and get away, and uh, that should protect it from Dark Void, yes? Mm -hmm. So long as, and Blastoise is going for the Ice Beam on the Gyarados. Mm -hmm. For neutral damage. Yeah, so this Rotom is actually in a very good position. Because it has a substitute to block a hit, and it also can't be affected by Dark Void anymore. Right, and Smeargle is going to perhaps burn to faint HP. Yeah, yeah it seems probable that Smeargle is just going to burn out next turn. Ah, burn out, I like that one. <laughs> that can be funny too. <laughs> oh, my friends were now would be going, Dad jokes! All right, so uh, what kind of things can we see here? What what can uh, maybe a follow me from Smeargle, perhaps? And then mm -hmm. I and imagine then, uh, that Smeargle wouldn't go for that because well, they're they're still the threat of the Thunderbolt from the Rotom. Well, actually, the Smeargle might is going for follow me, yeah. and that's probably because he's expecting it to be knocked out this turn, regardless. So he wants to just make sure any single target... Oh, the Discharge, of course! And the Discharge is going to do major damage to all of the Pokemon in the field, including Tony's own Gyarados. Oh, was, okay. Gyarados was probably hoping for a turn to Awakening to use Protect. Mm. But losing that is not too bad, uh, and taking the Ice Beam to the Substitute, Substitute... Uh, Substitute's not using the leftovers. Rotom's using the leftovers to heal itself back up. And Tony's actually in a pretty decent position now. Mm -hmm. The Blastoise is at low HP and paralyzed, and Rotom can take it out at his leisure. Yeah. Uh, and Tony reveals his last Pokemon, which is a Gengar. Uh, Randy, of course, still has a another Pokemon in the back, raring to go. Mm -hmm. If that Pokemon is a Scissor, he's probably in a decent position to take up a Gengar. It, I think it is a Scissor. We saw Pokemon. we saw all his Pokemon already. Oh, right. It's true. We did see it switch out earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a little bit mixed up because we've seen a couple of games now together. <laughs> From both sides. Yeah. Uh, but I'll try to keep my facts straight as best as I can. Uh, Gengar is going to Mega Evolve, so keeping the Scissor out of the battle for now. And going to protect itself as well. Uh, probably going to rely on another Discharge to finish off the Blastoise, perhaps? Yeah, it's either it's probably either going for that or it's going for the Will-O-Wisp on the Garchomp. And there's not really any other option to go for. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why he would want to get rid of the Blastoise right away anyways. Uh, I think that was the first Will-O-Wisp miss there. Mm-hmm. And... With a wisp with its 85% accuracy, it's it's going to eventually miss for you if you use it all day. Yeah, and Aura Spear hitting the Rotom uh, is going to make a big difference because now Rotom can't throw another substitute and basically has no way of protecting itself anymore. Another Rock Slide will take out the Rotom. However, Randy has to be careful of going for the same move twice because Gengar can disable it, although it doesn't go for that. It's going to go for the Shadow Ball instead. Uh, it is faster than the Garchomp, so I could have disabled it if he wanted to. Yeah, but as we see, Garchomp goes for a different move. Mm, so Randy, yeah, totally ready for potentially the Rock Slide. Also, Rock Slide uh, doesn't have 100% accuracy, and I think Randy really wanted to get rid of that Rotom. Mm -hmm. And with that Rotom gone, the Scissor is just clear to start bullet punching it. Yeah, and Randy is now in an excellent position. Tony mm -hmm. had looked threatening with that Rotom heat on the field, but uh, the first Rock Slide removing the substitute was huge. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Tony is going to throw up to protect here, um, but of course Randy does have the faint. I wonder yeah, well, if he will faints, reveal it to Tony here. Faints can't be used on ghost types. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a normal type move. Oh, but wow. <laughs> Critical hit off the uh, the bullet punch it does reveal the does reveal the life orb on the scissor to Tony, so that's some information that he can take to the bank. And uh, some side information, I know uh, Randy and Tony are very good friends. In fact, Randy uh, gave Tony a ride 
down from Vancouver to this tournament. Um, I don't know if he actually gave him a ride back, but uh, the... I'm the, sure Randy wasn't <laughs> going to leave his fellow semifinalists back in Seattle. Right. Uh, but Tony is using a scissor and so is Randy. I think at some point they were both using the same set. And so Tony might have thought that uh, Randy's uh, scissor was also choice banded, which is what Tony's scissor was. Oh, um, you know that Tony's is choice banded? Yes, I know that information. Haha, -ha. I have done the homeworks. But uh, Randy, of course, revealing the life orb now, uh, which gives him a lot of more options, and also gives mm -hmm. him the opportunity to use protect if he wants to. Uh, so Randy does win uh, the first game, and he is going to go back in to this second game here, and I think. Although he did win the first game, it was kind of not, uh, how do you say, a convincing win. And I wonder if Randy might switch things up. And I know you want him to bring Mega Venusaur into this one. Yeah, well, things didn't look great for Randy in the start of the match. Mm -hmm. But he was able to turn it around in the end. All thanks right. to Smeargle. I think Tony's probably going to bring a Star Raptor in, though. There are some problem Pokemons that he might get rid of. Mm hmm. Oh, and, and oh, we do see yeah, the Venusaur. Yeah. And he also leads off with the Scissor, too. Perhaps uh, not predicting uh, predicting Tony to not bring in the Rotom Heat this time? Hmm. He could just be expecting to U-turn out. That's true. Yeah. Scissor also makes good bait for the Overheat. So he could be planning to sw he could have been planning to switch in a Garchomp for a Rotom. That's true. All right. Uh, what kind of leads we might see here? Raichu has the potential to fake out and mm -hmm. stop something from happening. Yeah. Um, Randy most likely won't be protecting either of his Pokemon. We'll, we'll see what happens here. I think Randy would probably try to go after the uh, Raichu, just because the Raichu is extremely annoying. Mm -hmm. Oh, Raichu actually faking out the Venusaur. I actually thought he might fake out the Scissor here. And... Uh, Gyarados going to go for the big Dragon S. I guess he didn't want to get Giga Drained there. Yeah, well, the Scissor doesn't deal a lot of offensive pressure. Mm -hmm. Like, he's going to get the U-turn off on Raichu. That's actually a lot of damage. Yeah, well, Raichu's a pretty fra frail Pokemon, so I imagine it's holding a Focus Sash, and it just plans to live, survive two attacks. Smeargle coming out now. Oh, and Smeargle is going to get a Moody Boost this turn. Mm -hmm. So what he gets will determine the course of this match. Special defense not going to help too much. Accuracy drop is actually going to make a big difference here. Uh, so no Dark Void probably. I wonder if Venusaur runs Sleep Powder. Uh, uh, that would be interesting to know. Yeah. Because Venusaur generally has five moves. Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Protect, Synthesis, and Sleep Powder. And you always have to choose one of those moves to leave behind. Mm-hmm. So, with Dark Void on the team, he might opt to use Protect and Synthesis. That makes sense. So, once again, uh, the Venusaur, when it Mega Evolves, gains the Thick Fat ability, which uh, makes uh, it take less damage from Fire and Ice attacks, uh, effectively removing two weaknesses from Venusaur, and it'll take neutral damage from those. Uh, only, I think, only Flying and Psychic, Psychic would do damage to Venusaur. And uh, I don't think Tony actually has any of those kinds of attacks on his team. So that Venusaur oh, yeah. is actually going to be really bulky. Actually, he's got the Star Raptor. And Smeargle gains the accuracy boost, so making up for the accuracy drop beforehand and going above. Mm -hmm. So now he's plus one. But the Gyarados with the Dragon Dance is going to be faster than the Smeargle. Mm -hmm. And the Raichu also threatens to Encore the Smeargle into Fake Out. So I imagine the Smeargle is going to switch out this turn. Uh, Smeargle is going to go... Nope. Go for the follow me. Raichu encores the follow me. Mm -hmm. That was a good prediction by Randy, knowing that even if he had got encored, he oh, could the sludge, encore himself. Uh, Ice Fang misses, and Sludge Bomb's going to hit for uh, about 40%. Uh, attack goes up and loses special attack. None of those. That's an inconsequential moody. Mm -hmm. Unless he finds a way to use Fake Out again without switching out. <laughs> Uh, but it is locked on to uh, follow me instead, though. Mm -hmm. So both of Tony's attacks are going to have to go on Smeargle. Yeah, and I think Randy is perfectly fine with that. Mm -hmm. Although Tony's going to knock out the Smeargle this turn, most likely. Yeah. 
gonna get some chip damage to remove possibility of focus sash. And I think the Smeargle with all these different attacks most likely has a focus sash. I think only two items are pretty much viable for a Smeargle. And mm -hmm. it does bring in the Star Raptor, so that this will give really good I think this is his only answer for the Venusaur, and I think Randy needs to focus the uh, Star Raptor down here. Mm -hmm. But the Gyarados going faster than Smeargle, it's going to get the KO, so Smeargle doesn't get a chance to Dark Void here. Oh, actually, it followed me, so never mind. And we see another Sludge Bomb on the Gyarados, and this time we get the Poison. Oh, but the Lumberry revealed. So it's not Citrus That's Berry. Citrus. Oh, it's a Citrus. Yeah. I, I thought it was Lumberry. For my match. <laughs> All right, so Citrus Berry revealed. And now Randy has a very difficult decision to make here, whether he wants to uh, preserve his Venusaur until he can get rid of that Star Raptor. And Tony has to be predicting a Protector or a Switch out here. Uh, yeah. There's no reason to Final Gambit onto the Venusaur or Brave Bird it either. Yeah, you have to imagine that Randy wants that Star Raptor to go down as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Tony knows that he needs to preserve his star after. So, so it's going to be uh, one of those guessing games of he knows that I know, but I know that he knows that I know. But does he know mm -hmm. what I know? At the same time, neither side can really afford to risk losing their Pokemon and such. Mm -hmm. So Randy going for the obvious switch out here now. See what he brings in. It's going to be the Garchomp, which will deal with both of these Pokemon actually pretty well. Mm -hmm. And, and if, Tony went, if Tony went for the Brave Bird, between the bullet punch and the recoil of Brave Bird and Rough Skin, the Staraptor might just go out. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Staraptor went for a U-turn on the Scissor, so it was predicting a switch or a protect. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bullet punch, though, from Randy does do well to take some HP away from Staraptor. Final Gambit, of course, uh, does damage based on how much HP you lost when you sacrificed your Pokemon for it. So that is significant, eliminating Final Gambit from the equation when deciding, uh, trying to predict what the Staraptor might be doing. Uh, Gyarados is actually getting really good damage off onto the Scissor um, with a double target from the Staraptor and the Gyarados does get rid of it. And Venusaur is coming back, having not able to get rid of the Staraptor just yet. Mm -hmm. Randy's down to two Pokemon against Tony's four. Oh yeah. So he had no choice but to bring the Venusaur. Gyarados going for the Ice Fang on the Garchomp here, and wow, okay. The Dragon Dance paying off dividends, um, so much damage, and didn't miss the Ice Fang either. But I think mm -hmm. Poison is going to knock it out this turn. Venusaur does flinch from the Fake Out, and um, indeed Gyarados does faint from the Poison. And uh, Tony now has option to bring in, I'm guessing it's Gengar and Star Raptor. I think we saw the Gengar, right? Yeah, I, I think he might as well bring his Staraptor, because Randy's mm -hmm. down to his last Pokemon. Right. And he might as well just swing with the wind with those Brave Birds. Mm -hmm. The Volt Switch uh, from the Raichu, which is his only attack, will not do that much damage, but there is potential for Raichu to Encore and then the Gengar to come in later to disable and uh, have Venusaur struggle itself uh, down. Mm hmm yeah, between between Encore and Disable, it's really easy to take a, a single Pokemon if you need to. Mm -hmm. See how much damage this Brave Bird does? Oh, it does a big chunk. So that's yeah. good information to take to uh, the next round if Tony wins this one. Yeah, the Star Raptor didn't invest in a attack because it's invested in HP for Final Gambit. So it didn't quite do enough to knock out. Right, so it would invest stuff. into HP and probably speed? Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, he it brought in the scissor and not the uh, the Gengar that we knew. And this actually will probably close out the game unless uh, Venusaur protects here. But even then, a scissor Brave Bird space. and U-Turn will finish it off. I'm pretty sure uh, Tony's just going to spam Brave Bird U-Turn. Mm -hmm. It's also risky to go for Synthesis or Protect on Venusaur because if he does that when a Raichu comes in, Raichu would just be able to Encore it. Right. And if you were to... Staraptor's still alive. <laughs> Staraptor survives the recoil. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Tony takes the second game very convincingly, I, but I, I don't think it was wrong for Randy to bring in the Venusaur. No. 
I think the Venusaur was definitely a larger threat than the Blastoise, but mm -hmm. now if Randy wants to win the last game, he needs a way to get rid of the Staraptor as soon as possible. So we might see the Rotom come in here from uh, Randy. Rotom plus the Venusaur should give him some ways, and probably the, the Garchomp, I would assume? Yeah, well, Randy also wants to get rid of that Gyarados. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do you think he'll leave Smeargle at home and bring in the Scissor then? Scissor, Garchomp, Rotom Heat, and Venusaur? I think he would bring the Smeargle in place of the Scissor. Okay. And I, I have to imagine Tony's probably going to bring exactly the same team in uh, the second time around. It worked out really well for him, and I don't see why he would change it up here. Mm -hmm. At the same time, whenever you win a game, your opponent's going to be adjusting to your strategy. So you're going to want to make adjustments to what you predict them to do. Right, but I think Randy is going to bring the Venusaur back in, and I think Tony knows that, which means you have to bring the Star Raptor. And if you want to redirect the Rotom Heat attack, you got to bring in the Raichu. Mm -hmm. um, and then Scissor helps you deal with some of the stuff. And uh, the last one he has, Rotom Heat, might be switched out, actually. The Rotom Heat might be... Tony might change that for something else, because the Rotom Heat didn't do too, too much this time around without Blastoise on the field. Mm -hmm. If Randy's going for... If Randy's focusing on Mega Venusaur, then Rotom Heat just isn't able to deal with it. Yeah. So Tony might leave the Rotom Heat uh, at home here. Let's see what happens, actually. And the leadoff are, it's going to be Staraptor and Gengar, okay, uh, versus the Smeargle and Rotom Heat. So, predicted the Rotom Heat coming out from Randy here, and you are right in that he brought the Smeargle instead of Scissor. Well, he still might have brought Scissor, but I imagine his back is going to be uh, Garchomp and Venusaur, whereas Tony's back is probably going to be Raichu and... Oh, I don't know. Either Gyarados or his own Rotom. Yeah... I think probably the Gyarados. Yeah, I can't see Tony bringing Scissor to this match. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would imagine uh, Staraptor probably going to switch out for Raichu on this first turn here, and Gengar maybe protecting? Mm, well, Gengar isn't particularly threatened by Randy's team, but he could go for the Protect with the intention of drawing out a Dark Point and disabling it next turn. Right. Garchomp going to switch out. I think Randy... Uh, predicts that, yeah, there might be an evolution here and wants to get the guys he wants out first. Doesn't mm -hmm. want to leave the Rotom Heat out when he doesn't think he's going to do too much. Uh, so yeah, Gengar going to go protect, and actually the Star Raptor stays on the field, and it's going to final Gambit. I guess it was just intending to take out the Rotom Heat. Yeah, okay, that's an interesting thought. But it takes out the Garchomp instead. Mm hmm. So now Tony's actually left without a really good way to deal with uh, the the Venusaur. Uh, another thing that Tony did there with the Final Gambit is that he guaranteed that he's not going to get Dark Voided with the Protect and the Final Gambit. Mm -hmm. And um, now he has the option to disable Smeargle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he can prevent Dark Voids in the future, seeing how Gengar should be faster than Smeargle. I, di I didn't catch the Moody Boost there. Did you see? Smeargle... Smeargle got an accuracy boost and an evasion drop. Okay, so with the Disable hitting the Smeargle uh, potentially next turn, then that's going to lock out. Unless the Smeargle King Shields. Oh, and we see Randy's gone back to his Blastoise strategy. Oh, wow, that actually... If he had brought the Venusaur, it actually might have won him the game at this point. Mm-hmm, now that the Staraptor's out of the game. Yeah. At the same time, Venusaur can't do a lot of damage to Gengar. It's true. And it does risk just getting perish trapped. That's true. So yeah, Tony does have a secondary way of getting rid of the Venusaur through Perish Song. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if he's going to use the Perish Song at this point. Fake Out goes out onto the Blast Toys here, and Smeargle using Follow Me. Fake Out, uh, as we, you mentioned before, is faster than that. And Gengar is going to disable the Follow Me. Yeah, so now Tony has the option. If he encores the Smeargle, he'll be able to force it to struggle. Right. 
but he also wants to take. He want, also wants to just get damage on that Blastoise. Yeah, but Smeargle with the accuracy boost does threaten the Dark Void, and I think that's more important at this point. Mm -hmm. So he might have to just eat a uh, Water Spout from the Blastoise at this point. Yeah, well, if he encores the Smeargle, he's free to Shadow Ball the Blastoise, and that'll lower the damage output of Water Spout. And then Raichu, I haven't actually seen it in all the games I've watched from Tony, but I have to imagine that it has a Focus Sash. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Ooh. I can see its attack. I'm actually going to look up how much investment it needs to reach that attack set. Sure. Ooh, the Raichu, yeah, the Raichu has definitely invested a lot of effort into its HP. Mm hmm. And as we see, the Water Spout doesn't actually do very much damage. Vason, if uh, going up for the Smeargle here, that would actually make a big difference, uh, but the Encore did go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thankfully for Tony, the Smeargle can't follow me. Yeah. And if Smeargle could use follow me, it would also be able to redirect Shadow Ball, which doesn't even affect Smeargle. Mm -hmm. Because of his normal typing. And yeah, this double target here on Blastoise is going to finish it off. Mm -hmm. Surprised Randy didn't go for Protect there. If Perhaps. Randy went for Protect, though, he would still be at the risk of the Encore next turn. It's true. Yeah, that's the problem. When you have both Raichu and Gengar out, they're really just... Your opponent does not have very many options to protect themselves. Smirk, there's no moves left. That that Encore disable is beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. does hit the uh, struggle onto the Gengar, trying to get rid of it. Tony has so many... Pokemons in this matchup that are must remove. You know, you had the Star Raptor, you had the Raichu before, and you now have the, also the Gengar that you just have to remove. And it's hard sometimes to figure out which one you need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And if Tony can shuffle them around effectively, mm -hmm. he can keep them around. Like in this up. instance, he can't even go for the Thunderbolt onto uh, Gyarados because of this Raichu switch in. Mm hmm. And if he goes for the overheat, he'll lower his special attack. Yeah, but that's what, indeed what Randy is going to do. He's going to try to take out the Gengar here. We might actually get it. Yes. Oh, with a critical hit. However, I believe Randy is down to his last two Pokemon, so the Rotom is not going to be able to switch out. Yeah. Which means the Gyarados is probably going to be able to survive. Yeah, but the... The Encore has ended, so Smiracle can Dark Void if he wants to, but I don't mm -hmm. know... I also just saw an Evasion Boost. Mm -hmm. So Follow Me will also be pretty handy right now. Mm -hmm. You have to imagine Tony wanting to take out that Rotom Heat right away, because as soon as the Rotom Heat goes down, even if his Pokemon are put to sleep, yeah, Randy Smeargle, won't have any damage output. That's right. Uh, Smeargle has got Fake Out, King Shield, Follow Me, and Dark Void, so no other attacking moves. Now that mm -hmm. uh, he's already been out and fake out is not an option. Yeah, so I think to Tony is in a very good position to win this game. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we've seen Randy's uh, Rotom, I think. Um, I recall from his uh, report that uh, the Rotom is actually choice scarfed. And, oh, here comes the Encore, uh, which is, I know, is uh, inconsequential, but. Waterfall is going to come out and take it out. And I think the Rotom had to be Choice Scarf in order to outspeed Raichu there anyways. Mm -hmm. Smeargo now using Dark Void, but uh, as you mentioned, I think <clears throat> Tony can even just wait out the entire time and have three Pokemon to Randy's one. No, Tony only has two. Oh, only two Pokemon. Yeah. At but the same time, neither of them are at risk of fainting. Right. And uh, so even Tiebreaker goes into Tony's favor here. Yeah, the only way I could have seen Smeargle winning at this point is if Moody boosted his attack six stages and it was able to struggle to knock out the Raichu. Randy's going to forfeit here. I think he's not going to make us watch the entire thing. Uh, he understands he, that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't... have to imagine both of them are very tired at this point. That's true, and... too. And, and Randy has to drive uh, Tony back home. So... Uh, I was going to say Randy, but Tony takes it in two games to Randy's one, and he wins the Washington Regionals, uh, making him the champion of that tournament. So congratulations, Tony. Well done. And also congratulations to Randy as well, uh, coming in second 
and doing pretty well with the Smeargle, which uh, I think he, I think Randy came into this tournament trying to prove a point with the Smeargle, how strong it can be on, in the hands of uh, a skilled player. Uh, any other comments, you, uh, closing comments before we pop off here? I only have one comment to make, and that is that the one game that Randy won, he brought Mega Venusaur. No, he won the first one. He lost the Ven Mega Venusaur game. You can cut that out. <laughs> I, I do agree with you, though. I do feel like Randy should have brought the Mega Venusaur into the third game. Um, when the Star Raptor went down, I think that was his win condition, and he could have... Uh, capitalize on that at that point. But like you said as well, uh, both players were very tired at the end of the day and um, Tony did have the option to perish Song with the Gengar anyways so that was also on the field as well. Anyways Max thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Alright, and we'll be back some other time with more tournaments as they come up. Thanks for watching everybody. See you later. <laughs>